Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and I am here at the beach in Gulf Shores, Alabama. So I'm one of tens of thousands of Louisiana natives who overload their cars with gear and make the trek to glorious white sand beaches along the Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida coast each summer. So of course, this begs the question, why not just head to the Louisiana coast to go to the beach? Well, of course, Louisiana isn't exactly known for its beaches on its coastline. And in today's episode, we're going to get to the bottom of why Louisiana beach choices are so slim and how it wasn't always that way. Beaches make up about a third of the world's coastlines and are the products of some very specific geologic processes. So for a beach to form, you need a supply of rock material and plenty of wave action to constantly crush and work the rocks until they form the sand that makes up the beach. Now, where all this comes from actually varies by beach. So for some, it's sediments pulled up from the seafloor. Almost all involve some sort of erosion of land at the shoreline. And for a large portion of the northern Gulf Coast here, Eroded sediments from further inland are deposited on the shore by the many rivers over time. The Appalachians that are the source here are full of quartz minerals, so that means the beaches here vary from tan to, well, white in color. Now, beaches change over time throughout the day based on the tide coming in out, as well as the weather onshore and offshore, which changes the wave action here, not to mention the odd hurricane that blows through from time to time. So the layout of the beach changes throughout the seasons on an annual basis, where sediment usually is stored with sand piling up during the summer months here on the shore when the weather weather pattern is more stable, while in the wintertime with changes in wind direction and weather conditions, the sand just sits offshore in shallow areas that are known as shoals. So I've explained how beaches are formed well enough, but it still really doesn't explain why Louisiana's beaches are so rare. Well, like most videos on this YouTube channel, it has a ton to do with the Mississippi River and its impact on Louisiana's coastline. So most of South Louisiana, as you know, was formed through deltaic processes as the Mississippi River changed courses over the past 5,000 years. If you want to know more about this, check out my video series up here for all of the details. But what exactly is all this land made of? Well, it's certainly not sand, that's for sure. So you see, you can classify sediment based on the average size of the dirt particles. And I'm really simplifying here so all the pedologists out there can put their bore samplers down. So there's three major classes from largest to smallest. There's sand, silt, and clay. The soil types in southeast Louisiana formed by the Mississippi River overwhelmingly silt in nature. Even today, about 98% of the sediment load in the Mississippi River's depositing into the Gulf of Mexico is either silt or even finer clay sediments. So essentially, the raw materials for beaches to form and replenish themselves on Louisiana's coast just aren't present like they are elsewhere here on the northern Gulf Coast. But I know some of you are saying, but Louisiana does have beaches, and that is true. On the Louisiana Gulf Coast, there are three natural beaches you can visit. Well, there's Holly Beach west of Cameron, there's Rutherford Beach near Creole, also in Cameron Parish, and Grand Isle south of New Orleans. In addition, there's some small strips of beach near Grand Isle, the Chandelure Islands, but those are only accessible by boat and aren't human inhabited. So if the Mississippi doesn't provide enough sand to make or maintain beaches, Beaches, how do these beaches continue to exist despite all of the coastal erosion? So the answer comes from ocean currents, namely what we know as longshore currents. So here along the coast, waves come in the direction of the prevailing winds, which in the case of the Gulf of Mexico is from the south. So as waves meet the land, energy is released perpendicular to the waves and pushes the water in an east to west fashion. So this current carries with it the sediments from the seashore, which in the case right here is beach sand. As the sediment works its way westward, it drops along the immediate coastline, forming the beaches along the Louisiana coast. Now, since the longshore current passes through the Mississippi River's discharge, silt and clay sediments are also picked up along the way, meaning that beach sand in Louisiana is less white than here because of all the silt there. So when you compare beach sand from Grand Isle in Louisiana and over here in Alabama and over further to the east in Florida, the difference is made clear. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, we know this because of some unique geologic formations that dominate the southwestern Louisiana coastline. And these show evidence that the region had long stretches of sandy beaches just like the limited stretches seen today, 
even within the last 5,000 years. These features are known as chenier ridges, after the French word for oak tree, shame, and are sandy ridges that rise one to five meters above the surrounding marshland and expand up to about 50 miles in length. So these chenier's consist of a mix of sand and marine shells that set them apart from the silt and clay mudflats that make up the southwestern marshes. So the current understanding of chenier formations, it goes a bit like this. So when the Mississippi River has a more eastward path, sand from longshore currents deposit along the coast and form sandy beaches. When the flow shifts to the west, the sand supply is cut off and wave action piles the sand into the ridges. In its place, silt and clay from the river are deposited by the longshore current and marshland develops just like we see today. Over time, the Louisiana coast is built southward as the combination of longshore currents and the Mississippi built and shaped the chenilles and marshland that we see today. So when we look further back in geologic time, we see that during cycles of interglacial periods over the past several million years, as the land that became Louisiana built southward, beaches like the one I'm standing on here were once quite common with marine fossils and sand ridges found in bands of sandstone and sand deposits from east to west and north to south across the state. Some of the most recent are actually found as far south as Lake Charles or as close to the Gulf of Mexico as the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain. So there you go. Like so many other aspects of life in Louisiana, the Mississippi River even determines where we go when we want to head to the beach in the summer. And with the combination of extensive coastal erosion, massive hurricanes like Katrina, Rita, Laura, and Ida over the last 20 years, the few beaches we do have in Louisiana lead a more strained life than they have in the past, meaning we have yet another reason to support efforts to keep our coast as healthy as possible. So if you'll excuse me, I've got some shells to rake up on the beach and some tent stakes to kind buried in the sand. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.